Hello YouTube, this is Runo. 24 hour challenge where I try to build as many farms as I can in 24 hours. And in the last episode, we built this little trading hall that is hidden here. And this mob farm. So let's check the results from the mob farm. We had our trusty player Steve AFK for a few hours. And let's say I won't have any issue with gunpowder, I guess. Even a bit of redstone here from the witches. Which is always nice. Yeah, okay. Looking good. So for the next step for this farm would be to put in some shulker loaders. But for that we need a shulker farm, obviously. I was also active and bred a few cows. And harvested from this little sugarcane farm here. And I got five lecterns. So the first step in today's episode will be to extend our trading hall and to get some librarians in. If you've seen the last episode, then you know that we have got pretty much everything that we need except librarians. For that, we were missing the books. This is now fixed. So let's get to the good part of the trading hall, which is the librarians selling us all those nice books. Of course, librarians are to some degree the nastiest of all because it's so hard to get a good trade in. Well, sometimes it takes a while until they accept their trade. The principle, of course, is to feed them lecterns until they give you a good first trade. Here we might have to try a few times. And with slots for about 16 librarians, I will really take any trades, basically. Uh, I think we gotta put in a roof, otherwise they can... This guy thinks he can pass find to that workstation. Make sure everything is lit up here. There we go. And now this guy doesn't think anymore he can go over this workstation, so... Yeah, there we go. Of course we want bookshelves, but... Oh, this is good. Power 5 for a bow. Don't mind if I do. I can lock this trade in if I buy this bookshelf. So now both trades will be locked in and can't change anymore. We st have the power 5 trade here, and I'm a bow guy, I really like power 5. And the bookshelves, of course, will give us more lecterns. Sharpness 4, that's actually not too bad. We can combine two of these to get sharpness 5. So I think i take that trade. Okay, and now rinse and repeat. Let's get a few more librarians in, and see that we can get the most important trades like unbreaking, mending, and efficiency. And the starter trading hall doesn't need all trades or the perfect trades. I'm quite happy if I get, for example, efficiency too, but the ones that are really indispensable are mending and silk touch, some form of efficiency, some form of unbreaking. Here I was pretty lucky that I got almost all of the important trades except protection. I have fire protection, but I don't have protection. So I don't have enough emeralds and enough paper to trade them up to level 2, 3 and 4. So later we will zombify them and lower the prices and perhaps build a raid farm, which will unlock more books for each librarian. And then we can always see which trades are missing and which trades we still want to get. So I spent almost 90 minutes with these guys here, but it was worth it. I have respiration, aqua affinity, unbreaking, a bit of protection, Fire protection, now these are my nether pants, overworld pants, feather falling, unbreaking, and tools that are fully enchanted, more or less, infinity power bow. And you see I have quite a lot of librarians. Some of them are not locked into their trades yet, so I can try to get the remaining trades. So the limiting factor, as usual, is experience. So I just can't enchant the stuff anymore because I'm lacking the levels. So I think I'll just throw the stuff in here. Now, the next steps would be, of course, to fight the Ender Dragon. But actually, the next step in the series will be to build a slime farm. And if you know why I built a slime farm before I fight the Ender Dragon, then let me know. Leave a guess in the comments. Next episode, you'll see if you were right. The main thing that we need for a slime farm is actually an efficiency shovel because we will need to shovel a bit of dirt 
and an iron farm because we need to produce a few iron golems, which is no problem. We will need to get pumpkins somewhere. I haven't seen them yet. We can finish this another time. For now, let's go pumpkin hunting. All right, I gathered the materials for our slime farm, which is basically a ton of stone bricks. We will need a few fences. We'll need an iron golem that we produce and just a few chests to collect the slimes. So let's find a good spot. And this here is pretty much the perfect spot for a swamp slime farm. You want something that is pretty low on water level so that you don't have to remove a lot of blocks. You don't want any large mountains in the area. Now this is far enough away. And it doesn't matter if there's a bit of a different biome. If you have to light it up, it will be actually easier than in a swamp. And this farm here is modular and we will build one module and we can always add more. So let's roll and start by lighting up the area. So we need a 25 by 25 area cleared of trees and the lower platform will be at y equals 65. So if there is no dirt above this level, then that's a bonus. And then you need to light up the area. You want to block the other slimes from spawning. So slimes can spawn at light level of six or lower. So you don't have to light it up for other mobs. You have to light it up with light level seven or higher. If you miss a few spots for this farm, it's not too bad because you have plenty of room under the mob cap. So if there's just a little spot that is not lit up with light level seven, that's okay. The area that you have to light up is not too bad. Maybe 30 blocks in each direction from the center of the farm. Then get rid of all blocks that are higher than y equals 65. And I will put the center of the farm here. So you go down to level 63 and put in a 7x7 seven seven magma block area. And in the center of that, one hopper. On top of the hopper, a soul campfire. And below the hopper, a few chests, which will be our temporary storage. Later, we can, of course, use the crafter and compress the slime balls to slime blocks. Dig a little tunnel that will give you an exit. Finish the magma platform. Build two high walls around the magma blocks so that the slimes cannot jump out and put water in all four corners. In the middle, over the campfire, place an open trapdoor. If there was water, then the slimes would bob up and swim, so they will go down on the campfire and be killed. And the higher walls should now be at level Y equals 65. And now we extend it to a platform that is 25 by 25. You can use dirt blocks if they are in the way. If not, place additional blocks, any block, as long as slimes can spawn there. And 25 by 25 is as large as possible, so that any slime that will spawn see the iron golem. Except for the very corners, but that's not a problem, they will start hopping. The only way they can go is towards the golem, so they will see the golem a moment later. So the slimes will spot the iron golem in the center, hop towards it and fall down onto the magma blocks. And now build a layer of walls. You can go all the way up to y equals 71 if you wish. That's where the highest layer will be. And now we use redstone torches to light up the area. Redstone torches emit a light level of seven. Now the best way to light this up is of course brown mushrooms because they give a light level of, of one. So you would need a mushroom on each block. But if you don't have that many brown mushrooms, redstone torches are the next best thing. You will need about 16 redstone torches per layer to light up this platform. Just make sure that no block has a light level of zero because if one skeleton spawns in the farm, then your iron golem is toast. But also try to use as few torches as possible, because the lower the light level, the higher the spawn rate. And now you can place the iron golem, surround it with fences, and spawn it on a bottom slab at y equals 66. And then we add a second platform, three blocks over the first one, at level y equals 68, and this one has to be out of top slabs. You cannot use full blocks, because these would block slimes underneath from spawning. So this is the highest platform where we'll still get slimes. Slime spawns up to level y equals 69. And the iron golem is just high enough that the slimes on the top platform will also spot the iron golem. The upper platform again has a seven by seven hole in the middle, just like the lower platform. Now create a wall that is three blocks high around the upper platform. And then repeat the lighting up maneuver with redstone torches, just as you did for the lower platform. And now build a roof out of bottom slabs, so they are not spawnable. And the roof should be at level y equals 72. So the slimes have three blocks height to spawn. And that's pretty much it for the farm. The farm doesn't use any redstone. 
All you need to add is an AFK spot, 128 blocks over the hopper. So our bot Steve here was AFK for something like six to eight hours. Now let's have a look at the farm. And there we go, quite a lot of slimes just waiting to be killed here. Our golem is safe and sound. Here you can see the light levels. These redstone torches are three blocks diagonally away from the corners so that the corner has light level one. And then you see that all of the spots are lit up so this torch is smacked down in the center, this one also but one block away from a hole in the middle. I had to add a few fences over the golem, because otherwise it would be damaged by the slimes from the top platform. Let's also have a look how much slime we got. And that looks like every single chest is filled. So we've got five double chests of slime balls, which is quite good. So this farm is sufficient to give you enough slime to build, for example, a world eater. And if you want, you can always build more, more of these modules. The mob cap isn't nearly full, so I will craft the slime to slime blocks. But this is the end of the episode. So in the next episode, we'll go after the ender dragon and we'll certainly build, for example, a melon, pumpkin and sugarcane farm. We've got a lot of Minecraft to play. So let's see what we can get done in this time. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my episodes. And see you next time. Bye bye.